Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture of this course finite element method. So this is the fourth module that we are going to start today and this is the first lecture of this fourth module. Now this fourth module it basically deals with the two dimensional variable and with the scale vector variable problems actually we will deal here. Now in the earlier lectures we have discussed the one dimensional elements and two dimensional elements and those two dimensional elements were basically the scalar variable problems and in those earlier modules we have discussed the different concept of the shape functions then the formula and the concept of the stress strain relationship matrix or strain displacement matrix then for various stresses we have seen different formula and based on those different formula we have discussed different numericals. Some of the numericals were very lengthy, but those are not very complex. We had to only remember the formula and the application of that formula. These were basically actually the matrix multiplication and some other matrix operations we have done there. Now, in this lecture, we will start the two dimensional elements and that will basically deal with the vector variable problems so here we will discuss mainly the axisymmetric elements the concept of the axisymmetric elements and various formula regarding the axisymmetric elements we will discuss here and based on those different formula we will discuss different numericals in this module so let us start this lecture So this is the course objectives and course outcome of this subject finite element methods and these are actually familiar to us so I will skip this slide and this is also the COPO mapping and I will also skip this slide and I will start this module and the first lecture of this fourth module from here that is the elasticity equations now what is the elasticity then the concept of this elasticity then elastic limit then stress strain hooks law all these things regarding the elasticity these are known to us and we have studied this concept in the strength of material subject in our earlier semester so I'll not repeat those parts these are already known to us the concept of this elasticity stress strain displacement all these things these are familiar to us so the elasticity equations these are actually used for solving the structural mechanics problems so what we have discussed earlier at the introduction module or the introductory module that is the first module that we have seen that this finite element method problem it can be classified in structural and non-structural problems and in the structural problems we actually find the displacement which occurs due to the application of a load in case of a beam or bar element and in case of the non-structural problem we basically deal with the fluid flow and heat transfer problem and there we basically find the temperature pressure velocity etc for that fluid flow or the constant heat transfer problem Now these are the different types or the classification of the finite element problem. Now these elasticity equations, these are used for solving the structural mechanics problems. Now these equations must be satisfied if an exact solution to a structural mechanics problem is to be obtained. Now there are four basic sets of the elasticity equations which are the strain displacement relationship equations then stress strain relationship equations 
then equilibrium equations and the compatibility equations these are actually the four basic sets of the elasticity equations and in the next lectures and the next slides we will discuss the equations or the concept for this four basic sets of the elasticity equations and based on those different formula we will discuss several numericals later now what you have seen here that there are four basic sets of the elasticity equations which the first one is the strain displacement relationship equation next we are having the stress strain relationship equation third one is the equilibrium equation and fourth one is the compatibility equations and the first one it is the strain displacement relationship equations now here one diagram is given as figure 4.1 a two dimensional element before and after deformation it is shown here schematically so here we have considered a two dimensional element pqrs which you can see in the figure 4.1 now when an external force acts on the element then it undergoes the deformation and then it becomes p test q test r test and s test now this is shown here with the test line it means one external force is applied on the original element that is before the deformation it was pqrs and when some force or the external force is applied on the element then it undergoes a deformation and then the its shape or its deformed shape it becomes like the p test q test r test s test now the displacement in the x direction it is considered as u and in the y direction it is considered as v now it is known to us that the strain is equal to the ratio of change in length to the original length of the body so this is the concept of the strain that we have studied earlier that strain is the ratio of the change in length to the original length now if you considering the element pq in x direction we can form the formula of the strain in the x direction that is ex this is equals to p dest q dest minus pq that is the change in length divided by the original length so the original length was pq so from the concept of the strain we have formed the strain formula in the x direction for the element pq now it is p dest q dest minus pq that is the change in length divided by the original length that is pq now from the diagram we can see that the length of pq it is actually dx and p dest q dest square this is dx plus del u del x into dx square plus del v del x into dx square so this is p dest q dest square now calculating the p dest q dest using the binomial theorem and neglecting the higher order terms that is del u del x square and del v del x square we are getting p test q test this is equals to dx plus del u del x into dx so this is our equation number 4.3 now if we substitute the equations 4.2 and 4.3 in equation number 4.1 that is the equation for the strain in the x direction for pq then we are getting that ex this is equals to dx plus del u del x dx minus dx divided by dx so that means finally we are getting 
ex that is the strain for pq in the x direction it is coming as del u del x so this is our equation number 4.6 Similarly, considering the element PS in the y direction, we can write EY, this is del V del Y. And for that, we need to follow the procedure that we have applied to calculate the strain in the x direction, that is EX. So, till now, we have got the equation number 4.6 and 4.7, that is EX del U del X and EY equals to del V del Y. Now the shear strain gamma xy it is obtained by using the following relation that is gamma xy this is equals to del u del y plus del v del x so this is our equation number 4.8 So these equations 4.6, 4.7 and 4.8 these are the strain displacement relationships for two dimensional element. So these three equations we need to remember to solve the different numericals. It is the equation for EX it is del u del x then the equation for EY it is del v del y and the shear strain gamma xy it is del u del y plus del v del x. Now in case of three dimensional element the displacement in z direction it is considered as w and the strain displacement equations are obtained by extending the two dimensional derivations. Now strain in the z direction is z equals to del w del z and for that we need to follow the similar procedure that we have followed to calculate the ex that is strain in the x direction. And the shear strains are gamma xz this is del u del z plus del w del x and gamma yz this is del v del z plus del w del y so in case of the three dimensional element this is the formula for the strain in the z direction and the formula for the shear strain So this is the first basic set of elasticity equation that we have discussed just now that is the strain displacement relationship equation in number two we are having the stress strain relationship equation okay, so the stress strain relationship matrix or the constitutive matrix for the two dimensional element we have seen earlier so we have here considered a three dimensional body which is subjected to the stresses sigma x sigma y and sigma z which are independently shown here in this diagram now there is a lengthy derivation and finally the equation for the stress we are getting in this form that is equation number 3.28 so here you can see the relation in between the stress and strain in the left hand side we are having the stresses and in the right hand side we are having the strains is the column matrix of the strain so this equation 3.28 it is in the form of sigma equals to d into e so it gives a three-dimensional stress strain relationship for an isotropic body now here d is the stress strain relationship matrix or the constitutive matrix then number three basic equation basic set of elasticity equation it is the equilibrium equations so here 
in figure 4.2 we can see the two dimensional stress element so here we have considered a three dimensional element which you can see here in figure 4.2b now it is subjected to normal stresses that is sigma x sigma y sigma z then shear stresses tau xy tau yz tau zx and body forces bx by and bz which is shown in the figure 4.2 the considered three dimensional elements three dimensional element it is subjected to three normal stresses three shear stresses and three body forces in the three different directions now the stresses acting on the element are assumed to be constant as they act on the width of each face but they are actually varying from one face to the opposite like sigma x is acting on the left vertical face whereas sigma x plus del sigma x by del x dx it is acting on the right vertical face so this concept it is actually known to us Now adding all the forces acting on the element in x direction you can write the summation fx this is 0. So that means sigma x plus del sigma x del x into dx multiplied by dy dz minus sigma x dy dz plus tau xy into del tau xy del y dy dx dz minus tau xy dx dz plus tau xz del tau xz del z dz into dx dy minus tau xz dx dy plus considering the body forces bx dx dy dz which is equals to zero so here we have considered the difference of the shear stress then the normal stress in between the left and right side of the considered element along with the body forces so after simplifying we are getting the equation number 4.12 for the forces acting in on the element in the x direction Now if we divide this equation by dx dy dz then we are getting del sigma x by d, del x plus del tau xy by del y plus del tau xz by del z plus bx this is equal to 0 which is our equation 4.13. Next in this similar manner we can add all the forces acting on the element in y and z direction and the equations we can write in the similar manner by in the similar manner as equation 4.13 so del sigma y by del y plus del tau yz by del z plus del tau xy by del x plus by this is equals to zero this is in the case of y direction and del sigma z by del z plus del tau xz by del z plus del tau yz by del y plus bz equals to zero this is the equation number 4.15 and it is the summation of the forces acting on the element in the z direction now these three equations that is equation 4.13 14 and 15 these are the equilibrium conditions for the three dimensional element next we are having the fourth basic set of elasticity equation that is the fourth elasticity equation which is known as the compatibility equation now here in case of this compatibility equation actually along with the strain displacement equation that we have seen earlier 
we need compatibility equations to ensure that the displacement components u v and w these are single valued continuous functions so that tearing or overlap of elements does not occur now there are actually six different independent compatibility equations and one of which is del 2 ex del y2 plus del 2 ey del x2 this is equals to del 2 gamma xy by del x del y so this is one simple equation it is given for the compatibility equation and the other five equations these are similarly second order relations now these compatibility equations these are mostly used in continuum mechanics and the theory of elasticity So this is the concept of the compatibility equation. So till now in this two dimensional vector variable problem we have discussed the concept of the elasticity that is actually familiar to us and there we have seen that these elasticity equations these are used for solving the structural problems where we basically find the displacement then the stress strain relationship matrix then st stiffness matrix all these things now these elasticity equations must be satisfied if an exact solution to a structural mechanics problem is to be obtained and for that there are actually four basic set of elasticity equation that we have seen which are the strain displacement relationship equation then stress strain relationship equation then equilibrium equation and compatibility equation now regarding these four different or the four different elasticity equation we have seen and we have discussed the concept of these four and the formula and the equations associated with those and next we are having the concept of the axisymmetric elements Earlier, we have actually discussed with the one dimensional elements and two dimensional elements. And the two dimensional elements were basically the scalar variable problems. Now, in this module, we will consider a special two dimensional element called the which is known as the axisymmetric element. The concept of the axisymmetric element is already discussed when we have discussed the general steps of the finite element method. There we have discussed, we have seen the 10 different steps of the finite element method and there we have discussed this concept. So, actually many three-dimensional problems in engineering exhibit symmetry about an axis of rotation. Now such type of problems are known as the axisymmetric problem. And these axisymmetric problems can be solved by using the two dimensional finite elements and these elements are most conveniently described in cylindrical coordinates that is r theta z mm. now the <coughs> there are some conditions which are required for a problem to be axisymmetric now these conditions are actually the problem domain must be symmetric about the axis of revolution and which is conventionally taken as the z axis next the all boundary conditions must be symmetric about the axis of revolution and lastly all loading conditions must be symmetric about the axis of rotation so these are the required conditions for a problem to be axisymmetric. What are these? The problem domain must be symmetric about the axis of revolution which is conventionally taken as the z-axis. Which you can see in the figure 4.3 also. Next, all boundary conditions must be symmetric about the axis of revolution. And number three, it is all loading conditions also must be symmetric about the axis of revolution. So these are the three required conditions for a problem to be axisymmetric.
So what happens in case of an axisymmetric element, an axisymmetric solid, it is actually generated by revolving a plane figure about an axis in the plane, which you can see in figure 4.3, that a 3 noted axisymmetric triangular element is revolving and it generated a axisymmetric solid. So the finite element for axisymmetric solid, these are actually represented here as triangular element or quadrilateral element which you can see in figure 4.3 and figure 4.4 but these shapes are actually cross sections of ring elements so next we will start with the development of the stiffness matrix for the simplest axisymmetric element and the triangular torus whose vertical cross section is a plane triangle. So let us start the axisymmetric formulation or development of the stiffness matrix. So here we have considered a typical axisymmetric triangular element with nodes 1, 2 and 3 which is shown here in figure 4.5 now in two dimensional problems the displacements and distributed body force values are indicated by xy plane but in case of axisymmetric problems these values are indicated by rz plane which is shown here in the diagram 4.5 Now for two dimensional problem the displacement vector u can be mathematically represented as u x y this is a column matrix of u v where u and v are the x and y components of u respectively. Now in case of axisymmetric problems the displacement vector u it is actually given by u r z in the column matrix of u w where u and w are the r and z components of u respectively. Now the stresses and strains for two dimensional element are actually given by stress sigma equals to a column matrix of sigma x, sigma y, sigma z and tau xy it is the shear and in case of the strain E equals to Ex, Ey and the gamma xy. So these are the stresses and strains for two dimensional element. Now in case of an axisymmetric element, stresses and strains can be mathematically represented as stress sigma, this is a, a column matrix of sigma r, sigma theta, sigma z and tau rx, where sigma r is the radial stress, sigma z is the longitudinal stress, sigma theta is the circumferential stress and tau rz is the shear stress. In this similar manner, we can write the mathematical representation of strain in case of the axisymmetric element, which is the column matrix of E R, E suffix theta, E suffix z, and gamma R z, where E R is the radial strain, E z is the longitudinal strain, E theta is the circumferential strain, and gamma R z is the shear strain. Now for two dimensional problem body force is actually given by f equals to a column matrix of fx fy but in case of axisymmetric problem the f equals to a column matrix of fr fz. So these are the formula for the stresses and strain in case of the axisymmetric element and in case of the two dimensional problem we have also seen the formula for the body force in case of this axisymmetric element. So in this numerical or sorry in this lecture we have discussed the concept of the elasticity equation where we have seen the four basic sets of the elasticity equations which are strain displacement relationship equation then stress strain relationship equation in equilibrium equations and compatibility equations. Next, we have discussed the concept of the axisymmetric elements and 
There we have seen that how an axisymmetric solid is generated by revolving a plane figure about an axis in the plane. And regarding the axisymmetric formulation, we have seen the formula for the stresses and strain in case of an axisymmetric element along with the body force. So this is the end for this lecture and in the next lecture we will discuss the shape function strain displacement matrix for the axisymmetric element.